welcome. I'm Julia Child. I'm getting ready for a great big kitchen cocktail party. I'm going to have it right here in this room. And I don't like to make a lot of little itsy bitsy cannabis and stuff like that. So I'm going to do a beautiful gravlax, a dilled salmon in the Norwegian manner. Then I'm going to make a great puffy ham tart made out of French puff pastry. But the puff pastry is made in a revolutionary, new, fast way. And it's a really great way to make it. And then, of course, we're going to have the usual hard-boiled eggs, chicken wings, mini meatballs, oysters, clams, and peanuts, and red wine and white wine. And I'm going to make for you today the fish and the ham tart. And I'm starting out on the fish here. And this is a center cut of salmon, about two and a half to three pounds. And any time you get fish, feel, feel along it and see if there are any bones in. And look at that bone. And I've got all those a number of bones out of this area, so feel it with your finger. And then we're gonna, I'm going to turn this into gravlax, which means it's a salmon that is cured with salt and dill and cognac. And it's done a great deal in Scandinavia. And we had it when we were in Norway. And it's raw salmon, but the salt cooks it. And it gets the most delicious flavor. It's a little bit like, it's like smoked salmon, but it's even more delicate and delicious. And it's terribly easy to make. All you need to do is to have a, the wherewithal to buy the salmon. And you have, first you have a mixture of, for five pounds, you want two and a half tablespoons of salt and one and a quarter teaspoon, tablespoons of sugar. And you have the sugar in because the salt toughens the salmon and the sugar softens it. And put that on the skin side of the salmon, rub that in nicely. And then in Norway, you'd have fresh dill, but my dill is rather sad. So rather than using fresh, I can put some of that in. I'm going to use some dried dill weed and be sure that you smell it and make sure that it's nice and fragrant. And it usually is. And for this five pound salmon, you would want about one and a half tablespoons of dill, all told. And then you want a little bit of cognac. And I have the second, the other side of the fillet in here. There's the skin side, and I have a little cognac there and a little salt and dill. So I'm going to put a little cognac on here. And when you want drops, just put your thumb over the bottle and shake it. For this amount, you probably want two or three tablespoons of cognac at all, in all. And there, as you notice, the salmon has a thin side and a thick side. So there's the thin side here. So I'm going to put the thick side against the thin and the thin against the thick to make even it off a little bit. And then sprinkle on some more salt mixture on the top of the salmon. And then seeing I have some dill, I'll just stick that in there because it makes a nice, it gives a nice touch to it and then put on some wax paper, and that's really all there is to it. And I've done, um, I've tried this method with striped bass and with bluefish, and I've sliced it first and then put on the seasonings, and it's been very, very good. I also tried it with sole, but I didn't think it was very good with sole because it was, it was a little mushy. So now after you've done that, all you do is to put it in the refrigerator, and it takes about four or five days to cure. And after about the third day, taste it and see what it tastes like. And it may need some more, it may need some more salt or cognac or something. But before you put it to rest in the icebox, put on a, a board, and then I've got a bread, bread pan with a there you are. You can see how it looks. A bread pan with a can in it. It's about a five pound weight. And that you want to, I always do it if I'm going to have it do it a week before I want to serve it so that I'm sure that it's properly cured. And now we have the puff pastry. But in this new revolutionary way, you do the whole thing together. And you have, I have six and a half sticks of chilled butter cut into big dice. And then I have in the the rest of the bowl here, I have three cups of 
bleached all-purpose flour and one cup of plain, I mean, unbleached, unbleached all-purpose flour and one cup of bleached cake flour. In other words, it's 25% cake flour. And the reason for that is that anytime you're making puff pastry with American flour, you've got to lower the gluten content of the flour. So that's why you have the cake flour in. And you just, it just doesn't turn out well if you don't. So remember, three cups AP flour, one cup cake, and one and a half teaspoon salt, and six and a half sticks of butter. And now, I'm doing this in the machine because I want to make a large quantity and it's so much easier. You could do it by hand, but if you did, if you do it by hand, I think it's easier to do half the amount and then combine them. And you just rub the butter and the flour between your fingers. But you want to leave the flour in large lumps. It's not as though we were making regularly, regular pastry dough. And with this, I'm standing right over it and watching it, and it wants to blend itself, but still remain in rather large pieces. I'm going to see how that is. As you can see, the, some, of the, some of the butter has been cut up and some of it's remained in quite large lumps. I'm going to give it just a tiny bit more. But it's just a very small amount of mixing. You could also do it in a food processor using half the mixture. And now, we want to have one cup of iced water. And the great, one of the great secrets of puff pastry is that everything be very cold and just pour that in and you just want to get that just so it begins to mass there I think that's right oh I've got to get this off you see how that looks now you still see that there mass there's a masses of butter it has massed in other words but the butter is still in lumps. And now I'm going to roll it out, but I'm going to roll it out on a pastry marble. And this, if you're going to go into a lot of pastry, get yourself a marble and have it cut to, this, to the size of your refrigerator shelf, and then you won't have any trouble with pastry.